I'm Chris Mills. I am the president of Pitsense. Pitsense was started in 1999 by myself and my twin brother. We were sophomores in high school and we started the company. Started out as a marketing firm and we specialized in actually doing marketing software for websites. We moved into more custom software development solutions for our clients and we started writing different web applications and then we slowly moved into the actual web development space. Two and a half years ago, one of our employees, Phil Williams, came to us and said that he had this, this great idea. I came to Chris and Clinton with the idea of us creating some kind of a website to promote HitSense as a whole. So I wanted to come up with something creative and different. And we went in a few different directions, but I came up with this concept of what if you drew a stick man and then he came to life. And we kind of talked about it a lot internally and we didn't really know what the idea was and we decided that we just wanted to do something creative. We wanted to do something that people would enjoy um, and that would bring attention to our company so they would know that you know here is this interactive company that's doing these creative campaigns. And then we just built on that concept, we brainstormed a lot of different directions, went down a lot of different roads until we finally came up with this idea of this interactive story that you take this stick man through. Phil started with JavaScript and writing everything in JavaScript for the website. It was important to us that it was browser compatible across all the current browser sets that were out there. From then, Phil spent about a year, one day a week, working on this, this project until he had the website done. The website was very exciting to see how it came out. We launched it and in a very short period of time it went viral. About 36 hours after we launched it, we got a server message that our server went down. It was in the middle of the night, we didn't really know what was going on, so we jump online and we realized that the server load was maxed out. So we made some configuration changes and before we knew it, we got the server worked and then we realized our bandwidth was maxed out. So we real quickly had to open up an off-site system with CashFly, moved all the images out there. And within a couple days, we already served over three million unique people to the website. Since the launch of the website, we've received numerous awards. The biggest of those was the Webby Awards, which we received last year. The website won three Webby Awards last year, which was a huge honor for us. We had a great time going to New York and receiving the award. The website was very popular, and that led us to create several other apps based on that. We created the Draw Stick Man Episode 1 and then Draw Stick Man Episode 2. So the original website was just HTML and JavaScript and it already worked in the Safari web browser on iOS. So for our first app, we just made a full screen web view and displayed those web pages locally. Episode one actually made it to the top 10 overall in the free section. I was actually on vacation at the time and we couldn't believe it. This was our first app that had ever uh, made the top charts. We kind of sat down with the team and said, all right, so we've made a good amount of money um, we have the ability to either reinvest this and do a full length game, um, or we can just cash out and say it was fun and we're just going to move on. The whole team talked about it and we decided, you know, hey, we really wanted to get into the full length game. Draw Stickman Epic has the same idea that you draw Stickman and then he comes to life, but it's now this huge world that you can explore and you can interact in, it's much more interactive, it's much more creative. We quickly brought on several animators and several artists, grown our programming team quite a bit. My name is Craig D. Hutt. I'm a 2D animator and video producer, and I was primarily responsible for animating the elements for Draw Stickman Epic. My name is Annie Erskine, and I am an illustrator slash designer at HitSense and my primary responsibility was to help build the levels. My name is Matt Bittner, I'm a game developer here at HitSense and on Draw Stickman Epic I programmed most of the game logic. My name is Jeff D. Hutt, I am a 2D animator for HitSense and I created the majority of the graphics. My job is incredible, I draw pictures all day. It's my dream job. Draw Stickman Epic has some similarities to the the old adventure games that you might play, maybe some of the King's Quest games or some of the old Sierra adventure games. But it also has this very unique mechanic of drawing objects and having them come to life and interacting in the world through your drawings. Draw Stick Man Epic is an adventure game at heart, but there's a lot of different elements. It's also a puzzle game. It's also kind of an open world exploration game. So it combines a lot of different elements to create a really unique style of play. 
It's a game that encourages people to, to draw their own hero, draw the elements that they need. It's something of an RPG, something of a, of a puzzle game. It's got a little something for everyone. There's this whole drawing mechanic in it that you don't see in a lot of games. It really enhances your creativity and helps you put your, a little bit of yourself into the game. There's a lot of other games out there that have drawing mechanics, but they're really physics focused and they're really physics puzzle focused. And in Stickman Epic, we actually take what you draw and make it function as if it were that thing. For instance, fire burns things, lightning electrocutes things. All of these things, we recognize what your drawings are and they act in a way that's not just a physical object rolling around or bouncing around. That aspect of the drawing mechanic, I think, sets it apart quite a bit from other games. Typically, every level would begin by Phil and Matt and Jeff and sometimes myself. We would have sketched out ideas or come up with ideas for a new level, new puzzles or new creatures that we'd like to work in. It was very interesting because we each have different backgrounds when it comes to video games. And so we had a, a good mix of kind of old school games and mobile games. that We can lay these things out and say, well, I really liked games that used to do this and I really liked this, but let's find a new way of, of getting this level to accomplish that same thing. And we'd come up with these ideas. Then Phil and Jeff would take it back and uh, draw up the images and the sprites that we would need. It was really exciting to get to design big levels that people could explore and coming up with puzzles that would help people to think in maybe a different direction, especially in a creative direction. It was also difficult to just come up with new ideas. We were always trying to push ourselves like what could be next? What could they explore that would be fun and also challenging? So when we start designing a level, I'll usually sketch it out on paper, start coming up with ideas for individual puzzles. Sometimes I'll sketch out each puzzle individually and then start mixing them together and trying to figure out what would be a good progression of difficulty. The drawing mechanic, figuring out how to incorporate this drawing mechanic into those game ideas was, it was very challenging, but it was also a lot of fun. Probably one of the biggest challenges for me when it came to developing Draw a Stickman Epic was modifying my art style to fit with what Phil Williams had already developed. So he had drawn a few screenshots of what the game should look like and my style was similar but I had to make a lot of changes like loosen up quite a bit to match that sketchy feel he was going for. They would draw it in a fairly unique kind of style. We wanted it to look hand drawn. We wanted it to look like you could just open up a notebook and there would be the world of Epic. So kind of drawn outside of the lines and a little sloppy, handwritten. They would come up with the images, pass it off to me, and then I would then animate the elements and the creatures needed for each of the levels. We start working with the different characters and monsters and creatures that we have in that level. The animators will take those creatures and break down what kinds of states they need, what sorts of animations they'll need, if they're attacking, if they're walking, if they're reacting to something. My favorite part about working on Epic was working on each of the creatures. Um, it was exciting to, to kind of put some personality in the animation of, of each of the creatures. Obviously, the, the troll is gonna act differently than the, the cute little color buddy, and the bunnies are gonna have a different personality than, uh, than maybe the, uh, the fire-breathing armacillos are gonna have. And uh, it was always fun to kind of infuse a little bit of personality into each of my animations. A character may be made up of a half a dozen different sprites that we would throw into Flash, uh, and then we would have to move each one, one at a time, and make sure that the motion flowed correctly and tweak it if necessary. It was usually the animation that took the, the longest. Uh, sometimes we weren't able to see what we were actually animating. For example, when we were animating the stick man himself, we had kind of this invisible box. So we had to use our imaginations to kind of picture what that would look like. While all of that is going on, our programmers would be in the back creating new AI for the creatures that we would develop and getting each of the pieces and each of the elements, getting the pencils to behave appropriately within the game. There are monsters that'll chase Stickman, there's uh, butterflies in the cloud level that just kind of move randomly and have little patterns of insect movement. There's uh, the elves in the winter level we added will be able to target Stickman and throw snowballs at an arc, things like that. So it's just finding a way to do things simply but then also make them seem convincing in the world. And it was always great. We could go back to Matt 
and say, Matt, this is what we're trying to get the troll to do. Or wouldn't it be cool if we could get the bunnies to do this when you tried to chop them with an axe? And uh, we would have no idea how he would get it done, but we knew that he would get it done. You know, go, go and work your magic. And he'd come back a little while later and say, yeah, I got it working exactly the way that you needed it to. During that same time, the original illustrations would be given over to Annie, and she would then construct the level map based on what had been drawn. She'll take different sprites that we've created and she'll lay out those sprites, put the trees in the right spot, she'll put the cliff in the right spot. Figuring out, okay, how can we save space? We can repeat certain elements, like we don't have to draw 50 new rocks. Doing things like rotating it a little bit can make it look completely different. And so it, what was fun for me was taking all these pieces that created the levels and then figuring out a way to make each level look unique. And we start playing through it, seeing how it works, tweaking things, go back, reanimate things. Then we'll have to start, once we get to a final point where we feel like it plays pretty well, we'll start showing to other people. We start focus group testing it. From that feedback, we'll go back and rework things. It's really a long process. I think my favorite part was uh, you know, the way we developed Epic. The animators could go off and make a level, and the programmers didn't really know anything about the level. And so it was kind of being you know, that first person to play a level and beat it were the programmers. And we, you know, we would find puzzles we didn't know how to solve, and workflow was pretty fun. Some of the initial challenges were levels were quite large in the game, you know, several times larger than your viewing area on the screen. And, you know, there's all kinds of animations within each level. So the first challenge we really faced was getting the load times to a bearable level. Some of the early builds, it would take 30 seconds to get into a level, and you know we couldn't accept that. So originally, our you know we were saving all our level data in JSON, and we found out that using binary reader and writer was just 10 times faster. You know, our load times now can be just a couple seconds, depending on where you are and what level it is. Easily, the most difficult part of my job on Epic was constructing the sprite sheets. Most games are put together by a series of sprite sheets, uh, giant images that contain all of the small images that the game is constructed out of. And uh, for us, it was very important to make the game a certain file size so that it could be more accessible to users downloading it on their phones. And so the sprite sheets were very important to make sure that they were making the best use of, of the space, that we were getting as many images uh, on each sheet as we possibly could and uh, sometimes that involved we would create five new images, just five, but it would be enough that we'd have to rearrange six different sprite sheets in order to get everything fitting correctly. So it was like working a giant jigsaw puzzle, but it was also a challenge. We just had to find a way to, to get it done. In the middle of July, uh, Microsoft reached out to us. Uh, we were in development for our new Epic game that we were working on, and the plan was to release it on uh, Android and iOS on Thanksgiving. Uh, Microsoft reached out to us and said, hey, we're doing this Windows 8 promotion um, with the new Windows 8 launch in October, and we really want you guys to be a part of it. And so we got the whole team together and said, well, our deadline was to launch on Thanksgiving. We're going to have to launch in October to be on the Windows 8 store, but we're going to be part of this in the beginning. It's going to be a um, good publicity for us, and it's going to be a good partnership with Microsoft. And we all decided, hey, this is something we want to do. We want to we want to be there on GA with Windows 8 in the store, be one of the few that actually made it. And then we were contacted by some Microsoft uh, developer evangelists who wanted to uh, support for Windows 8 as well. Seeing Windows 8 coming out on October 26, of 2012, we decided we wanted to move our deadline to the 26th and develop for Windows 8. To have it ready for Windows 8, uh, required us to have it done and submitted around the beginning of October, first week of October. But the mills were really great. They sat us down and they said, here's an opportunity. What do you guys think? Do you think that we can do that? And we all, we all realized that this was something we couldn't pass up. The opportunity was just uh, too good. And we, we recognized it's going to take some extra work. It's going to take some more time on our part to come in early and to stay late. But we knew that we could get it done. So we bunkered down working feverishly to get the music and the sound effects in, to work out all the kinks, 
It was really challenging to get the amount of resources we need. Um, we know almost every project always takes longer. This was a project that we had a date and we had to do it a month quicker. Uh, and then even with that, we had to go through the process of getting it submitted to the store, which took several weeks. So we had to be there actually before, uh, it was really closer to October 1st. So it was a very tough task. Xamarin made uh, developing Stickman app because of a cross-platform app a lot easier than it would have been otherwise. We were able to share most, if not all, the code. What Xamarin has developed is a way to use C-sharp and .NET on Android and iOS. And since our game is developed in Visual Studio, on Windows and using C-sharp, um, that really enabled us to get on iOS and Android. Uh, without Xamarin, we would have rewritten the game in Objective-C or Java, and we didn't have to do that. We were able to integrate the whole live tile system so that whatever level you're on, the, the live tile actually shows that level as well as integrate with the charms menu. You know, that's a really good advantage with Windows. They're really trying to standardize all of their forms. So when a user wants to get to the settings, they know, oh, go to my charms menu. And, you know, it's nice to have that level of commonality between your app. We were able to submit it and have it ready on the Windows Store on October 26th when, when Windows 8 launched which was an incredible opportunity for us. And I think that really put us ahead of the curve as being one of the first good apps in the marketplace. It was a great opportunity to have it available for Windows 8 because we were able to get to the number one in the store very quickly. We hit number one on the paid section on Windows 8 and you know we had been featured in both the Windows 8 and Windows Phone store. You know, Draw Stick Man Epic, we've got it on the Windows 8, but we also have it on Windows 8 phone and Windows 7 phone. Uh, it's available for, for iOS and for Android. We even have it available on, on Mac computers. Epic's been a neat success story for us in that it's had a, an appeal really around the world. We were expecting it to be much more centered in the U.S., but we've actually had a lot of international interest in it. It was the number one game on the App Store in Europe. It was also several other countries. It made the number one on the charts. So it's been neat to see how it has such an international appeal. We're at more than 2 million, almost 2.5 million downloads across all platforms. So the success of it has been really good. We've got a huge following from you know kids from first grade to sixth grade just really love the game and love the idea of it. And they can just play it over and over and over again. It's just exciting to see so many different people have the opportunity to play it. It's just really great to see something that we worked on embraced by the world. And I love that we released the different languages and now it's like everybody can play the game. It definitely opened up the door for us. We have another game that we're currently working on and we have a half a dozen ideas that we've got on the back burner when this one is done. So. It's definitely opened up a lot of opportunities for us. It's really changed the face of our company and really redefining possibly who we're going to be in the future. And so Epic really opened up our company. We really saw the potential, what we could do here as a company in the gaming world.